Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. We'll give folks just a moment to clear the waiting room and connect to audio. Good morning, this is the voting hearing of the Licensing Board for the City of Boston. Today is Thursday, April 4th, 2024. This morning's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. While the public is encouraged to attend, there will be no additional testimony uh, accepted this morning. We'll begin with the voting, uh, we'll begin with the license premise inspection hearing, which occurred on Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Item number one uh, will be deferred and continued until the next available hearing date. Item number two, CMG 10 PO Square, LLC, doing business as Marielle, located at 10 Post Office Square. Date of the incident, October 15th, 2023. Assault and battery patron on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Uh, this is um, the testimony that was presented. The security intervened, assisted the victim, called police, separated the parties. I see no violation. I agree. I agree. Item number three, Paga Inc. doing business as Icon, located at 100B Warrington Street. Date of the incident, October 1st, 2023. Assault and battery, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I see a violation here. Uh, the video that was presented and reviewed, um, the security did not have a handle on the situation and actually was seen on the video punching um, one of the patrons, and they also didn't call the police. Sounds good. Yeah, I saw the same thing. Okay. The vote is for a violation as to the disposition of the violation. Uh, I don't have their doc in front of me, but I did look yesterday, um, and I believe I'm correct to say they don't have a history of this, um, a recent history of this. So my vote would be for a first warning. I agree. Good. The vote is a violation with a warning. Is there correspondence, de-escalation, security? And calling the police. I think that should uh, be noted in the correspondence. Thanks. Just see. A violation with a warning and correspondence, uh, which would underscore the importance of de-escalation and calling police in an incident such as this. Item number four, Game On Fenway LLC, doing business as Game On Sports Cafe, located at 72 to 82 Lansdowne Street, date of the incident, October 8th, 2023. Assault and battery, employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. First, I want to comment on the record. I appreciate the licensee's cooperation with, with us for, uh, in our request for video. Um, that being said, uh, this I believe this could have been prevented. I think it was foreseeable that someone would be injured with a security officer holding a flashlight and punching someone. Um, he hit. He's seen on the video hitting the victim. Uh, I see a violation. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um, it even started before that with the acquaintance of the main victim. Um, that's really when it got physical, I saw. And the, the one thing that bothered me, I, I mean, I don't want to belabor the point, but the their kind of focus on how obnoxious the patrons were, it, it really, that's not an excuse. That's actually, in my mind, that's something that is very foreseeable and something they should be ready for in the business they're in. And so I don't see it as an excuse. And I think that their focus on that was, um, you know, misplaced. And so I wanted to say that. Yeah, I, I think that those are the kind the kinds of actions that should have been controlled. And so, you know, if there were um, security around, uh, not just down that stairwell, but actually monitoring the basketball area, I think it could have been prevented. The whole thing could have been prevented because it could have been de-escalated much earlier. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with all, all that you guys said. So given the history, um, the recent history, my vote would be for a first warning in correspondence. 
I think noting what Commissioner Karn and Commissioner Saxon have shared on the record is important to convey in writing to the licensee. Under the circumstances with alcohol in a situation like this, these things could are foreseeable. Yes. Commissioner Karn, anything you would like to add? Can, can I just have a moment? I'm sorry. Sure. Okay, I am looking back at a previous incident, but it is far enough back and maybe not quite related enough to this exactly. So I would vote for a warning as well. Yes. So a violation with a warning and correspondence from the board. Oh, uh, Chairman, you're on mute. Yes, I agree. Item number five, La Flaca E.L. Gordo, Inc., doing business as PICA, located at 280 to 306 Washington Street in Brighton, dated the incident October 8th, 2023. Assault and battery, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I see no violation here. Definitely no violation. I agree. Item number six, the Boston Leco Corp, located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street, dated the incident January 27th, 2024. Assault and battery, employee on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Just a second. Um, I was able to review the video that they submitted, and again, I appreciate the cooperation with the licensee in submitting the video. Um, it's clear from the audio and the visual that the patron was hit and punched by an employee in response to a comment. Um, it looked like a very frustrating situation, um, but I did see an assault and I find a violation for the assault. Yeah, I mean, we've said this before, it's, it's almost no matter the provocation, I mean, it was an extreme verbal provocation, but it's you know legally it's not an excuse for a, a physical battery uh in return um I, I guess the the circumstances are mitigating but they don't excuse the the fact that it was a violation and um really kind of a lack of the uh, other people that were standing right there that kind of stop it as well so um unfortunate situation but it is a violation I agree with all that's that, that's been said. Definitely, um, there's a need for de-escalation at all times with um, on the part of the staff. It, and it's really in the the premises is best interest to be on top of this. I mean, they can't allow them their employees themselves to be provoked because this is same thing. It's foreseeable they you're gonna have jerks who are trying to provoke you. And, and you saw it here. It was clearly the guy's plan. As soon as he got hit, he, he he's calling the police, you know? I, so, yeah, it, it's it's not only in our interest to enforce it, it's in their interest to be to be on top of it as well. It sounds like there was a vote for a violation um, as, as to uh, the disposition of the violation. As to the disposition, uh, I did take into consideration the mitigating circumstances um, and what was done afterwards. However, I still find a warning. Uh, I still find a violation. My vote would be for a, a written warning. I think a warning is perfect. Okay. Violation with a warning. Item number seven, UVM Inc. doing business as Biddy Early is located at 141 Pearl Street, date of the incident January 27th, 2024. Overcrowding 72 on mechanical count, capacity 57, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Board's Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Uh, for the overcrowding, I see a violation. Yes. I agree. I know they're working towards getting their numbers changed, but they knew this. Um, my, my vote is for a warning. I agree. I agree. Violation with a warning. And item number eight, McCarthy's Inc. of Boston doing business as the Pudding Stone Tavern, located at 1592 Tremont Street in Roxbury, dated the incident February 1st, 2024. 
overcrowding, 87 on mechanical count, capacity 73, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F, and persons under 21 in possession of alcohol, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Sections 34A, 34C, and 6464A. Taking the overcrowding first, I see a violation. Yes. My vote is for a warning on the overcrowding. I agree. I agree. For the persons under 21, I see a violation. There was eight of them. I see a violation. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I was not convinced with the testimony that they had the proper measures in place. Our team did go back and check their scanner, and they said the scanner did scan correctly some of these fake IDs, but that's not a defense. That being said, um, my vote is for a four-day suspension, one day to be served, three to be held in abeyance for six months, similar to what we did with some recent ones. Um, and the four day being because they we just had them in for and we had, we spoke to them about over reliance on the scanner and all that. Yes. All yeah. right. I didn't because it. I think the last one was quite similar. We went with three, but I, I can see an enhancement here considering the recent history. Is that the thought? My thought was because it was eight people. Yeah. That, that, um, First, what, five the last was, time or something? I think it was six last time. Yeah. We actually did go through the record yesterday, trying yeah. to speak in the same way. And I just yeah. think it's important a message for the board to send that, especially in these college neighborhoods, they need to put measures in place. It's not okay to say that they were in there before 10 o'clock, that they looked older. Um, they need to really um, button us up. I think there's yeah. um, maybe some follow-up that they need to do about their back door, whether it's a... Yeah, that seems to be a problem. A push handle or there's something to correct the hole that is clearly there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Carden. Yeah, I, th I think my sense of the situation there is that, that uh, you know, the way between the inside and outside needs to be staffed at all times, really. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there something that the board would like to see related to the back door? Is there a correspondence we'd like to send regarding that? Uh, how, how would we like to address the issue with the back door? Some kind of plan. On what yeah, we could ask, we could ask them to submit a plan. I mean, it's up to them to figure this out. We've raised the issue. We've drawn their attention to it. We've discussed why we think it's not working for them. Uh, we should ask for a written plan, especially given the fact that they are this violation comes with a four day suspension. Okay, so just to get the vote back on the record, so what we is a violation with a warning on the overcrowding. On the under 21 violation, and this was a four day suspension with a one day to be served, three to be held in abeyance. For six months, right? Yes. For six months, great. And the board also requests, uh, it sounds like some sort of uh, uh, operations plan that will identify uh, how they, or that will detail how they identify patrons and how they will staff um, that back door to ensure no one comes in uh, unidentified. Yes. Right. And, and identify the to to really spell that out. It's to mm -hmm. identify the underage people who have come in before the doorman came. So if there's a wristband or whatever, whatever they'd like to do, but somehow they need to be identified. So that's a plan that we are asking them to uh, submit to the board. How to identify patrons, uh, especially those who have come in before the doorman arrived and how to properly staff the back door. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the transactional hearing, which occurred yesterday, Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Item number one, EAHG Boston 2 TRS LLC, located at 90 Tremont Street, has petitioned to change the manager to Patrick Herrick. I vote to approve Mr. Herrick as manager of record. I believe he has the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. I agree. Item number two, Dialong E Hot Pot Inc. doing business as Dynasty Restaurant located at 14 Hudson Street. Has petitioned to change the manager to William Janmin Fong. 
has petitioned to change the corporate name to Dynasty Restaurant Inc., has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, and has petitioned for a change in stock interest. I vote to approve Mr. Huang as manager of record. Um, I also vote to approve uh, the change in corporate name and the change of officers, directors, and the stock change. I agree on all. I agree. Thank you. Item number three, Harvard Club of Boston, located at 374 to 380 Commonwealth Ave, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business to four rear entrances on Newbury Street in a full building with 700 capacity at Harvard Hall, 351 capacity at Assembly, 49 capacity at Veritas Lounge, 86 capacity at Veritas Dining Room, 210 capacity at second floor banquet dining, 114 capacity at third floor club room, 95 capacity at lower level club pub, with an annual patio on private property with seating for 36 and closing at 10.30 p.m. I vote to approve this. I think this is a great example of our temporary patio program becoming permanent, something the administration has worked really hard for and our, our office has been a part of. So my vote is to um, approve this patio. I vote to approve as well. I agree. You item number four, Fuente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Biliaris Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. Uh, he has petitioned to transfer the license to ZAAKFL LLC, doing business as Biliaris Columbia at the same location. Laura Perianis, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. I vote to approve Ms. Perianis as manager of record. I believe she meets the character and fitness requirements. And uh, transfer? Oh, yes. I also vote to approve the transfer. I do as well. I agree. Thank you. Item number five, Next Corporation, doing business as ODB Liquors, located at 732 Huntington Avenue in Mission Hill, has petitioned to transfer the license to 732 Brigham, Inc., doing business as Brigham Liquors at the same location. Charvac Carpe, manager, 11 p.m. closing hour. I vote to approve Mr. Carpe as manager of record. I believe he's the appropriate character fitness to serve. And I also vote to approve the transfer at the same location. I agree. I agree. You item number six, Blue Nile Inc. Doing business as Blue Nile Restaurant located at 389 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Has petitioned to transfer the license to Beza McKenzie LLC. Doing business as Blue Nile at the same location. Theodoros Testify manager, 12 a.m. closing hour and has petitioned to pledge the license to Blue Nile, Inc. I vote to approve the transfer at the same location and to approve the pledge and to approve Ms. Mr. Tesfai as manager of record. I believe he is the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. I agree. Item number seven, Commonwealth Market, Inc. doing business as Tropical, located at 1090 Commonwealth Ave. Has petitioned to transfer the license to Shippies Retail, Inc., doing business as Commonwealth Market at the same location. Govind Patel, manager, 11 p.m. closing hour, and has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company. I vote to approve the transfer at the same location, to approve the pledge in inventory, and also to approve Mr. Patel as manager of record. I agree. I agree. Item number eight, Metamorphosis LLC, doing business as Metamorphosis, located at 1153 Washington Street in Mattapan, has petitioned to transfer the license to LM Wines and Spirits LLC, doing business as LM Wines and Spirits at the same location, Giuseppe Arcari Manager, 11 p.m. closing hour, has also petitioned to change the category of the license to a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, and has petitioned to remove uh, the condition from the license, which states, as agreed, beer and wine shall be contained within no more than one third of the public area of the license premise. Uh, in general, I, I, I do uh, uh, support this transfer at the same location and Mr. Akari is manager of record. He's already been approved by the board. I, uh, I support removing the conditions. Um, I would like them to come back when it is ready to be built out or open and have another community process. It's hard. This is going to, right now, when you look at it, there's nothing there to actually discuss. I'd like to see a floor plan and a security and operations plan. I don't oppose the transfer at this location right now. I think we need more process when they're ready to open. Okay, so where does this application stand? 
like I, I you, you voted to, to approve it. Yes, approve the transfer, but I would like to note I would I, I, I vote to approve it. I'm not uh, I don't want to slow it down or or stop it, but I would like them to come back to the board and share their uh, floor plan, share their security and operations plan when they actually have a space. Um, it sounds like they're going to be part of a new construction, and I'd like to see how that fits into the overall building plan. Okay, I agree with that. I agree. Thank you. And just just to state this, uh, they may be coming back for an alteration of premise depending on what the build out looks like. So, Chair Woodrow, you're saying if that is not the case, you would still like them to come back and present to what the yeah, because the testimony yesterday was the building's being torn down. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely altering the premise. Yeah, so they, they should come back. I, I just, I want to be able to see how they're going to be operating. How many right. registers are going to be, you know, where the entrances and exits are going to be, what else is in the building, you know. It makes sense. Great. So the application is granted and the board requests that they do come back uh, when uh, they are closer to opening yeah. to review their floor plan, security and operations plan, and what the layout will look like. Yes, I have no issue with the public need of this type of license here. Looking at that neighborhood, it's not overly saturated with package store licenses. So, right. thank you. Item number nine: Immersive Art Space Boston LLC, located at one thirty Columbus Ave, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Post Road Company LLC, doing business as Hill Kitchen, located at thirty nine Charles Street. Jason and Delicato, manager, two a.m. closing hour, and has also petitioned to change the license type to a Section Twelve restaurant. Uh, the board received correspondence this morning that the applicant did meet with the Beacon Hill Civic Association last night, who voted to oppose the application, and the applicant is also now uh, requesting that the board defer its vote uh, to allow for further community process. Okay. Uh, the board will vote to defer. Yes. Moving on to non-hearing transactions. The following are applying for a new common victual license at a previously licensed location. Item one, Chinatown Gong Cha, Inc. doing business as Gong Cha, located at 40 Harrison Ave. Manager Minyu Chen, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item two, Magdala Restaurant, Inc. doing business as Magdala Restaurant, located at 1296 Blue Hill Ave in Mattapan. Manager Gene Nelson, hours of operation 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. Agree. Agree. Item three, Ana Mo LLC doing business as Cafe Quattro, located at 817 Harrison Ave in Roxbury. Manager Mohammed Morchad, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. And item number four, Spring LLC doing business as Spring, located at 90 Peterborough Street. Manager Chung Chang Tao, hours of operation 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. The following have applied to make changes to their existing common victualler license. Item one, Pressed Juicery Inc., located at 288 Newbury Street, has petitioned to change the officers of the license business to William Kitchen as manager, Justin Needleman as president and CEO, Deborah Moros as secretary, and Gregory Williams as CFO. I vote to approve. I do as well. I agree. And item number two, Habibi's Lounge, doing business as Habibi's Lounge, located at 1217 Commonwealth Ave in Alston, has petitioned to update the capacity of the licensed business to 96 people. Um, this was based on uh, construction and revised uh, numbers from ISD and Boston Fire. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Following has applied for a one-day amendment to their existing license. Timeout Market LLC doing business as Timeout Market located at 401 Park Drive has applied to extend uh, their license onto their contiguous lawn for a Wayfair promotional event on May 8th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. The board has before them a list of applications for special one day alcoholic beverages licenses, which have been administratively reviewed by staff and approved by the board. And we have one item for a vote on old and new business. Uh, this transactional item was deferred to confirm uh, patio hours at similar establishments on Newbury Street, which has been provided to the board. This is a transfer from, uh, sorry, this is an alteration of premise. SS Investments, Inc. doing business as Dirty Water Dough Company, located at 222 Newbury Street. 
has petitioned to amend the description of the license to in one room on the first floor, kitchen and storage in the rear with a seasonal May to October outdoor patio on public property, 180 square feet on street, 84 square feet on sidewalk with a closing hour of 9.30 p.m. Sunday through Thursday with patrons off by 10 p.m. and the closing hour of 10.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday with patrons off at 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I do as well, thank you. I agree. Thank you very much. Those are all of the items before the board this morning, and that will adjourn this hearing. Uh, thank you all, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.